What happens after the last Bitcoin is mined? It's not 2140 that you actually have to worry about. It might be much earlier than that. 2032. If miners walk away and adoption stalls, Bitcoin can crash to zero. Zero. Zero dollars. But if nation states pile in, it could hit one million dollars. And some people think that'll be as early as next week. This isn't a future fantasy. This is a fork in the road that we're speeding towards. Now. Let's imagine tonight the faucet shuts off. No new Bitcoin, no minor paycheck. If block space is auction only, what's the opening bid? $30 or 30,000? And if no one is willing to pay, does Bitcoin flatline before breakfast? Clear! Hmm, strap in. We're rewinding 130 years of monetary engineering to find out exactly what you and whole nations will cough up for a single on-chain transaction when the last Satoshi is mined. I said strap in, but also buckle up. Don't forget to buckle up out there in Radio Land. Hi, Motions. This is Beyond Bitcoin. Let's dive in. First, we should start with what is Bitcoin mining? And to explain, here's the CEO of SAS Mining, Kent Halliburton. Bitcoin mining is the only way that new Bitcoin are generated. They're generated through the consumption of electricity. Now, why do they do that is a separate question. But in essence, Bitcoin is a decentralized ledger. There's tens of thousands of nodes that keep a copy of this digital ledger. And that digital ledger is a blockchain. It's made up of blocks of transactions. Every 10 minutes, the protocol regulates it so that a new block is found by the miners. Now, how that specifically works is that a random number has to be guessed by crunching all the data in that block of transactions. And that guess has to be perfect and is very difficult to be perfect. And so we have trillions and trillions of guesses that occur. And those guesses take computational power and that consumes electricity. So that process is what mining actually is. How many sats are left on the clock? Bitcoin miners are paid what's called a block reward. That block reward consists of two things. It consists of the block subsidy, which is 6.25 Bitcoin as I'm recording this. This block subsidy started at 50 Bitcoin. And then whenever you have a halving, it was halved. So the first halving, it was halved to 25. The next halving, it was halved to 12 and a half. And now, as we said, it's at 6.25. So this is what's intended to be a temporary subsidy. That's why Satoshi used the word su subsidy, even though the subsidy will, of course, last for over a hundred years. 99% of all Bitcoin will be in circulation by 2032. You know, between 2009 and, you know, and 2035, we will have mined 99% of the Bitcoin. So the subsidy cliff isn't a 2140 problem at all. It's actually in the next decade. Yeah. The one you're in. Fingers crossed. Block space is scarce. About 30,000 transactions per hour. In April of 2024, ordinals and runes spanned the mempool, right? I mean, I don't know. I'm just reading off of a script, so maybe you can let me know in the comments. Fees briefly outran the subsidies, 12 to 1, proof that the auction works and stings. How high can fees climb? Sailor builds the staircase in this clip. So there'll be commissions and fees to trade. There's a very limited amount of transaction space. The, the fee will go from a few dollars a transaction to $30 a transaction to $300 a transaction to $3,000 to $30,000 to $300,000. Security budget migrates from block reward to fees if enough people keep bidding. What if they don't? When the price of Bitcoin sometimes falls, they will, they will turn off their machines. This causes the Bitcoin network hash rate to fall because you have fewer computers on the network. As a result, blocks get produced more slowly. Maybe you'll get a, a new Bitcoin block every 11 minutes instead of every 10 minutes. And so you might have to wait 11 minutes to get that 6.25 new Bitcoin put into the system. But what happens is there's this difficulty adjustment that we've spoken about or alluded to a few times. After about two weeks, in other words, 2016 blocks, the difficulty required, the processing difficulty or the calculation difficulty or the hash difficulty required to mine a new block will fall and, and make it easier to mine a new block. So that way, even though there are fewer computers, the difficulty will fall. And so blocks will, will continue to be produced every 10 minutes on average. The difficulty dial turns down, costs fall, yet the hardware keeps hashing. 
because it has nowhere else to earn. Everybody that gets into Bitcoin mining does a one-way trade. You take a billion dollars, you invest it in Bitcoin mining, you can't get your money out. You can go bankrupt. The equity holder can go bankrupt, then the creditor gets the Bitcoin mining. The credit, the debt holder can go bankrupt, then the electricity company, the power company mm -hmm. gets the mine. The power company can go bankrupt. The nation state, the sovereign that owns the power company will own it. If you notice, electricity companies never go bankrupt. Maybe they're owned by the state or they're owned by the country, but people decide they want electricity and they'll keep running them. There's no way to turn them off. And that's why even in a crypto winter or bear market, the hash rate just keeps going up. It's a, it's a one-way silicon ratchet. Bottom line, state actors can and will subsidize security if it keeps their reserves spendable. This is Sailor again. In a world right now, I guess you have a trillion dollar asset class and the Bitcoin miners get paid 10 billion a year. So the cost for the security, right? 10 billion a year is, is like 1%, right? The fees will trend to be less than that. And so that that 1% security cost will probably become half a percent, a third of a percent, a quarter of a percent, a tenth of a percent. But there's no reason why the revenues can't go up while uh, the value that's, pr uh, that's protected goes up. And the incentive is always going to be to run the equipment. Even if uh, the transaction fees aren't high, once you've invested $100 million in Bitcoin mining equipment, it's a sunk cost. You can't repurpose it to anything else. If your electricity is free, and if you have $100 million of equipment, then it doesn't matter whether you make a million a year, 10 million a year, or 100 million a year, you would run it for a million a year. You would run it at a 99% lower price because a million a year is still better than nothing a year. The electricity is worth nothing to you. A third of all the electricity in the world is valueless. It's It's Wasted, stranded, we've got too much. In the best case, global adoption. The fees stay small relative to trillion dollar transfers. In the worst case, adoption stalls and energy spikes and on-chain transactions become a kind of luxury rail car. The script tells me that three forces stop the hash rate from hitting zero. But before we go to that, do you want a mining partner that's aligned with you? I know I do. Saz Mining only earns when you do, as in mining as much Bitcoin as possible. Saz Mining handles the hosting, hardware, and power, so you can mine Bitcoin straight to your own wallet with zero maintenance. Start stacking sats quietly and live your life. It's non-custodial, easy to set up, and honestly, there's nothing more satisfying than stacking sats straight from the source. Book a call with one of their expert team members and start mining today at sazmining.com. All right, so those three forces, one. Layer two, siphon. Lightning moves the coffee money off chain. Two, free power miners. Flare gas, stranded hydro, negative cost wind. Number three, hardware life cycle. Obsolete rigs migrate until electricity is free enough. Mining on expensive electricity goes out of business. Mm -hmm. So when they go out of business, where does their equipment go? It migrates to the next buyer. Who's the buyer of last resort? Someone that has free power. There are actually places where there's negative, where the power is uh, negative cost, hmm. where people will pay you to take the electricity. You know, that, that happens on um, solar and wind grids, where uh, the sun is shining, the wind is blowing, and we're going to burn out the grid unless you take the power. Wow. Unfortunately or fortunately, fees are the price of honesty. It seems pretty obvious, but the bigger the value secured, the more we will pay to keep thieves out. So here's a question for future you. Will you shell out a fat fee for an immutable transfer? Or will you ride lightning and leave the base layer to the whales and the nation states? Let me know in the comments below what fee tier you'd stomach. Don't forget to smash that like button, use a hammer if you'd like, and subscribe to the Simply Bitcoin channel for more content like this. We're coming out with it every single day. And hit that little notification bell because it'll tell you when new videos come out, just like this one. Later, everybody.